Будь це жінка, а жінка має його приймати, бути йому благодарною, любити його, да, відповідно. No, this isn't an anti-feminist statement from a bygone era. These are ideas that are being shared today in Russia's womanhood schools. My program is called Woman Insight. И поэтому э, эта школа была организована им для того, чтобы сделать совершенную девушку, совершенную женщину. Умение разговаривать, это умение поддержать разговор, это не э, говорить глупости да, какие-то, которые неуместны в той или иной ситуации, это не заявлять о себе то, что не стоит, э, так как не стоит заявлять о себе. Да. Ориентироваться в любой ситуации правильно, да, по-женски. И преобразуя в счастье. То есть у нас школа состоит из радости, счастья, позитива и гармоничного, правильного состояния женщины и ее, ее состояния в этом мире. In her one-on-one -on -one courses, Alicia offers counseling, beauty and styling tips, all with the aim of creating what she believes is the ideal woman. According to Alicia, women come to her seeking three main things. Да, в основном три момента – гармонии, мужа и денег. Мы, конечно, все очень такие российские женщины, можем все и в огонь, и в воду. But according to Jennifer Utrada, author of Women Without Men, Single Mothers and Family Change in the New Russia, the role of women as caretakers and men as protectors is not as idealized as Alicia makes it out to be. There's a longing for a sober, reliable breadwinner. You try to interview hundreds of Russian men and women to understand family life there. What she found was a reoccurring problem within Russian marriages, alcoholism. In 2014, a study indicated that 25% of Russian males died before the age of 55, largely because of alcohol. As a result, you try to noted that women were being forced to take up the role of caretaker in the home. Studying families, it is a big problem and it would come up in terms of just not being able to count on a partner. And among the women she interviewed, the idea that the men in their lives were unreliable wasn't just down to alcohol. Unlike the West, Russian society never really embraced feminist ideas that would encourage men to become more involved in home life. During the Soviet era, women were required to work but they were also still expected to be homemakers. With the establishment of the Soviet Union, equality felt like more of a slogan because there wasn't a movement to really involve men in domesticity, ch childcare, housework. Women really had this double burden. In modern-day Russia, there are no laws requiring women to work, but under Russian President Putin's conservative government, benefits that help working women are not as plentiful as before. And according to Utrada, many women feel like their life choices are limited. I think one of the main themes I found in researching this book is that there's a real disappointment in both Russian men and also the idea of the government doing anything for them. Like it used to provide these benefits and free after school programs and maternity leave. They can't rely on that anymore. Literally almost every woman said, I can rely on myself alone. There were a range of things that they're open to. They would get support from their girlfriends and other women that would help them keep this, you know, focus on relying on themselves. The idea of self-reliance, of being the person within the marriage who is holding everything together, is one that is echoed in Alicia's ideology. Например, совершенно сторонница этого, что действительно женщина должна заниматься женскими делами, женскими вещами, чтобы когда он приходил домой, у него было дома все идеально, да, нужно это время, да, это и одеться, это и приготовить ему еду, и накормить его, но это за детьми присмотреть, а это занимает очень много. Когда тебе работать, извини меня, пожалуйста, при этом, при всем, да? Of course, not every woman in Russia feels the same way as Alicia. In 2012, the feminist rock band Pussy Riot staged an impromptu concert inside a church, singing lyrics that incited men and women to become feminists. They were arrested, but it's thought that their protest was one that represented a growing feeling among young Russian women that they were being treated as second-class citizens. But inequality surrounding gender role expectations in Russia may continue to permeate, because despite his policies, it seems there is an appeal in Putin to some Russian women because he appears reliable, masculine and more sober than previous leaders. And though it may seem strange to some, there are a lot of women like Alicia who just don't believe in feminism.
например, на Западе, как вы сказали, да, у них другое воспитание. Воспитывают все-таки, наверное, женщин так, что ты должна все сама получать там работы, добиваться и так далее и тому подобное. Наверное, поэтому у них не возникает такой острой потребности в муже, да. Но надо учитывать, что когда женщина добывает, она перестает немножко быть с правильной энергетикой женской и перестает быть на сто процентов жила. Это уже исследование. And while Alicia continues to school dozens of young women to be the perfect wife, she herself remains unwed, building what seems to be a thriving business. In this next episode over on Seeker Daily, learn more about what life is like in Russia for women. And although women in Russia are legally allowed maternity leave, some women are forced to sign contracts which effectively waive their rights to work in case they get pregnant. This is in spite of the fact that Article 19 of the Russian Constitution guarantees equal rights for men and women. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Seeker Stories for new videos every week.